Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're getting our first in-game look at the third map being released in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. This is a much smaller 4x4 kilometer tropical island map. This is the smallest map available in PUBG so far. Both Erangel and Miramar are 8x8 kilometer maps, so this map is quite literally a fourth of the size. Um, and in fact is a bit smaller, especially when compared to Miramar in terms of the actual surface area where you can travel. That being said, there's a ton of trees, a lot of jungle, a lot of small houses scattered very evenly throughout this map. And it does still allow you to move around relatively concealed unless, of course, you're going for one of the hot drop points, which of course is kind of a staple in a PUBG map these days. Now to play on the new map, it's currently on the experimental server, which is different from the standard test server. So this map is still a work in progress and it's pretty easy to see that once you land. A lot of the texturing and the detail work isn't quite in yet and there's a lot of non-textured buildings and stuff like that. However, what is included in this new map is a dynamic weather system. Now you can join a game and it can start raining or maybe it'll get really foggy all of a sudden be hard to see where you're going. So the weather can shift up dynamically now. This is something that a lot of people were asking for with previous maps and it's kind of cool to see it now in the experimental server. I'm sure once they balance out the timing and sequencing of it, it'll be a feature that will make its way over to the standard maps like Erangel and Miramar. It does also appear that the length of the rounds has been shortened with the circles closing in a bit faster. So the rounds seem like they're gonna last around 23-ish minutes, 23, 24. For. Hard to say exactly when you'll end up killing the last enemy, but uh, that seems to be a fairly big change up from the 30 to 31 minute length of a standard PUBG match. Now pacing wise, it did feel significantly faster than a standard PUBG match, but it's also something that's really within the player's control. Do you want to have an aggressive start? Well, there's plenty of places you can drop in the path of the plane flight that'll put you right next to 10 other enemies and you can have a firefight right away. If you, however, want to try and avoid combat at the start and maybe loot up a bit, there's so many different little crops of buildings along paths and areas that uh, you can probably still find yourself a unoccupied area to try and loot up and get some stuff. Not a guarantee, obviously, because that's the nature of PUBG, but it does feel like this map is being designed a little bit more with the knowledge of how PUBG plays out. I wasn't sure how this map was going to perform simply because the Miramar map did everything that I thought that the developers needed to get away from, which was a bigger map, even more buildings, um, slower pacing, lots and lots of vehicle travel time, running and dying to the circle more frequently. Um, and this map does not seem to suffer from those issues nearly as much. You can pretty easily run across the entire map if you need to, so vehicles are not necessarily a must in this map, and keeping up with the pace of the circle is not nearly as alarming or as dire as it is compared to maps that are four times this size. So generally speaking, I feel like PUBG just plays better on a smaller scale format. Like even with 100 players, but on just a map a quarter of the size, you're going to see more action a little bit more frequently. The circle is not going to kill you as much, and the rounds can be a little bit shorter. They don't have to be quite as drawn out, so less camping. In fact, I even think that there's moments at the beginning of these rounds in which uh, some of the circle speeds could even be sped up a little bit more just to get the action moving that much quicker. Now the visual styling of the map is certainly a bit of a change up. You'll notice inside a lot of the buildings and just geometry and design, it seems like the devs are really trying to go for a minimalist approach with the polygon count. So you can kind of notice in some of the unfurnished buildings that things have gotten much simpler from previous maps. I think they're becoming far more aware of the poly count here, especially since there's so many more trees on the map. They got to reduce it somewhere. So the buildings are becoming a little bit more simple. I kind of like the style of the map. It looks good when the sun is out and bright. But uh, when things get overcast and rainy or foggy, it looks like garbage. Um, and I just think that's something that the developer should try and be as aware of as possible. They really make their game look like crap when it's when it's sort of muted color tones out and less saturated. The PUBG to me looks the best when the sun is out and bright and things can be as saturated as possible. And when they start muting the colors, 
it just looks really bad in my opinion. It's, it makes me feel like I'm playing a game from early 2000 in terms of the graphics. Even though this game is capable of higher end visuals, uh, the art department has to be there to sort of back them up and uh, those weather effects just kill the look of the game for me. Also, they're still using the god-awful water shader for the rivers and stuff like that. This is the Unreal Engine. We just saw some incredible stuff at Game Developer Conference of what is capable within the Unreal Engine, but they're certainly not taking advantage of it in PUBG. And I feel like for a game that's gotten as big as it is now, let's throw a little bit of money into the graphics, guys. Let's get that art department up to speed. Something that's a bit different in this map is that there's a lot of hills with steep verticality to it. So you can scale a hill pretty quickly, you can get a good view from up top of a hill, and you're going to need to be looking up a lot more than you did in previous maps, or down if you're at the top of a hill. So a bit more verticality here and a bit more sort of ease of access of verticality. Sure, there's cliffs in Miramar, but to get up on them is a bit of an ordeal, so there wasn't too many firefights between top of cliff and bottom of cliff, but there should be a lot of firefights between tops of hills and bottom of hills in this map, and that's kind of an interesting new take. Now, another byproduct of the sheer density of this map, with buildings being in virtually any direction, lots of cover, lots of trees, is that it adds a bit more of a chaotic feeling overall. Some of the other maps we had big wide open spaces. You could glance out over a big plane and sort of determine pretty quickly if there was a guy there or not. If not, you kind of had an idea, guess what? Nobody's to the north of me for probably about 200 or 300 meters. I'm safe in that direction. That is not the case with this map. There's so many trees, so much defilade that it's going to be really hard for you to get a good idea of what's happening uh, around you. So you kind of just have to keep your head on a swivel. I think that adds a bit more to the chaos of the gameplay. However, I haven't really played the map enough to see if there's good ways of sort of minimizing the threat angles or uh, stuff like that. Maybe there's certain areas of the map that you can go to where you can control your engagement a little bit more safely. Testing so far has only been available in first person perspective solos. So it's hard to say how this map is going to play out with squads. There are small pockets of buildings all over the place, but it's usually enough to sort of get one player decently armed. Um, to do a four-man squad, uh, chances are you're going to have to do a bit more looting. People at the start of the round will probably go with some weaker weapons for a while until the squads can get fully kitted out. So again, there's a lot more exploring to do on this map, a lot more testing. And as you can see from the footage here, so much of it just isn't really textured out yet or finalized. So we're probably still a month or two away from this map coming to the live servers. I, I don't know for sure how long it takes for them to finalize a map, but based on what I'm seeing here, there's a bit more testing that needs to go on. And I'm hoping that they'll add a lot more visual finesse to the map. I do really enjoy the biome though. I think Tropical Island is a good setting, you know, sort of the, the Russian Erangel style island too was kind of cool as well. But Tropical brings a different setting. We got different trees, different plants. There's like ferns and stuff like that, huts. Um, the buildings, interestingly, I haven't found any buildings that have bars on the inside. So maybe the devs finally got the memo about windows with bars on the inside. And again, the buildings are much simpler. So we'll see if they add more complexity to them down the road, or if they are really trying to just incorporate a minimalist design to the new map and see how that plays out. So really the devs are trying a lot of new things with this map. Aside from scaling it down to a quarter the size of any of the previous maps, they're also adding a lot more vegetation, a lot more verticality to it. So line of sight is gonna be lesser than other maps and it's also gonna be a bit more chaotic. And it's a great example of how map design and map choice can completely change the style of a game. PUBG will have the same weapon mechanics and gameplay mechanics as it always has, but this map is going to change it up pretty dynamically. You may really enjoy playing on this map or you may totally hate it based on your previous PUBG experiences. Performance wise, once I actually got in on the ground and everything was loaded in, I usually got between 90 and 110 frames per second. Then again, I'm on a monster PC, so you may not be getting as decent of a frame rate. And I've also turned down some of the graphics settings. Not everything is on high. 
Overall, I think this is a exciting direction for PUBG. The smaller scale map is something that I've been wanting to test out for a long time now, and it plays well. It plays about as well as I thought it would in terms of pacing and the circle not causing death anywhere near as much as it used to. So I think this is a really good step in the right direction, and I hope the developers look into creating more 4x4 maps rather than more 8x8 maps. I, I think the pacing really works out well here. So anyway, if you're unable to get into the experimental server, I'm sure that the map will transition to the standard test server in the near future, and hopefully everybody can get in and test it out for themselves. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.